What's going on, my movie friends? This is Tommy Knocker, the movie guy, coming at you. And guys, I'm getting closer to 1,500 subscribers. Yeah, but I'm a selfish prick. I want 2,000 subscribers. No, but seriously, guys, really thank you. 1,500 subscribers. I can't believe it. We are getting there. I do want 2,000 subscribers, but I really appreciate the support. We're getting there. We're getting. We're improving. We're improving. Today, guys, ugh, I don't know much about this franchise as much. And I just rewatched the 1974 classic. Today, I'm doing 10 things I've always wondered about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original 1974. Like I said, this is the franchise I least the, I don't the least about, you know, the major ones. This one came out before them all. He is the OG. So... I can't believe I have not. I'm behind in the times, guys. I, I'm an older guy. I have not played the video game yet, but uh, it looks a lot of fun. I mean, look at that shit. Uh, I mean, the graphics alone and the. Uh, right, right, right. That's not the right game. Yeah, guys, there is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre Atari game. Yeah, true story. Uh, but no, the video game that came out, it, I haven't played it yet, but it's badass. I can't believe they took so long to get a proper Texas game. Uh, this isn't one of my 10 things I've always wondered, but here's a legit question. Why can't get this? Why can't they get this franchise on track? You know what I mean? It's me personally looking, looking at back on this franchise. I think they should have stopped when they did the reboot with Jessica Biel in 2003. And when they did the prequel with Jordana Brewster. I think that was what, 2006 or something. That should have been it. My opinion. The rest that they put out. No. The one that was on Netflix a couple years ago, no. It wasn't for me. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, has a special place in my heart. It does. When you're a little, little kid watching this, it leaves an impression on you. But there are some things I've always wondered, so here we go, guys. Ten things I've always wondered about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Number one. Now, we're watching this over the years... And then going back when you were a kid and the thought of Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you know the plot, you know what happens in it, but you don't remember the full details. I Does anybody else remember this being bloodier? Okay. It's like it's almost like a, the Mandela effect. You just had in your head all these years that there was like all these gruesome kills and cannibalism and blood everywhere. But no, that's the, that's the crazy thing about this. And it's such a classic. There's hardly any blood in it. True story. There really isn't. Same thing with the original Halloween. If you go back and watch this stuff, you really do appreciate where what it brought. But yeah, when you're a kid, I always thought Texas Chainsaw Massacre '74. I was like all these brutal kills. For some reason, I thought the hook kill was uh, was more. I thought there was more to the hook kill. I mean, we'll get that later on. But I don't know. You just have this thing in your head when you're younger, and it doesn't go away. And then you watch it when you're a little bit older, like, oh, that's. It's not that bad. I mean, not really by today's standards. It was more about the shock value. I don't know. Number two. So he did clarify this, and it's true. I don't know if he got credited for it. He might have got credited for it, but he did not get paid for it. So the narrator, that's Dan Fielding? That's John Larroquette narrating. Apparently him and Toby were friends. And I read, he, Toby asked him, hey, when you narrate this, he didn't get paid in money. He got paid in weed. I had a lot of respect for John Larica, and my respect for him got even bigger. The man didn't get paid. He got paid in weed. That's a good friend. That's a good friend. A good friend with weed indeed. Number three. Did this really happen? Now, that's another one of those things when you're a little kid. And you kind of hear, you know, your your parents or your older sisters or or cousins or aunts or whatever, and the uncles, and they're saying, "Oh yeah, that Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that really happened back then." And it's like, okay, so no, it did not happen. Not this way. It's based on the serial killer, I believe, Ed Gein. He was in uh, Wisconsin. It was based on that. But for some reason, people hear that back then, non horror fans, of course, and they get it all screwed up. So I'm thinking this for a while when I was a kid watching this, like this, all this shit that you see really happened. You don't exactly know what they're trying to talk about. I thought the whole, everything, the guy in the wheelchair, the house, the grandpa, the hitcher, 
everything I thought was real. When you're a kid, you're very confused, but I thought this really happened to anybody else. When they're younger. When they're younger. Number four. Why does Leatherface dress like a woman? Okay. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Well, he's got the mind of a child, right? So I'm looking back at this. I'm looking at the... This is Remember, this is only 1974. They changed the family throughout the franchise. I can't, I can't keep track. But if I remember correctly, parts one and two are more alike. They're more continuation. Like part two is from part one. But the rest of the movies don't fit in that timeline, I, I don't think. But um, he does dress like a woman throughout. Uh, pretty much a lot throughout the movies. Why? Like I said, he's got the mind of a child. There's no woman, there's no mother figure in that family. Are they making him become like the mother, the mother part of it? Like the female, the mother taker, the taker of the house once in a while? I don't know. He's asexual. He's probably confused. He's never been around women. Who knows? Why does he dress like a woman? But to me, oh, what a coincidence. Let's look at this. Yeah. Leatherface Pretty Woman Mask. It's called the Pretty Woman Mask. I mean, mm, dude, I think I would. I think I would. Sober. Yeah, she, yeah he looks pretty good with that lipstick. Um, but why? Uh, to me, it makes it scarier. It really does. The fact that he gets like that, and the red little Leatherface mask is intimidating alone. But there's also something a little creepier that adds the element of, of it when he adds the pretty woman mask. I think it's creepy as shit. What do you guys think? Number five. Okay, he's in a wheelchair. Who cares? Who cares, okay? Tough break, tough break. You're in a wheelchair. Doesn't give you an act, doesn't give you a free pass to act like an asshole and a dick. Guys, is Franklin the most annoying character in horror history? He's up there. He's up there with me. Uh, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head right now. But Franklin. Actually, I did a video of this, guys. Go, go. Uh, this was a while back. Go and search it. Most annoying horror characters that I, I did that. And he was top of my list. He's on the thumbnail, for Christ's sake. Um, like I said, I don't care that he had a wheelchair. I did feel bad for him at the end. No, no joke. I did feel bad for him because where's he going to go? You fucked. Where are you going to go? You know what I mean? you got these killers all over the place. You're in Texas. You're in a wheelchair in the woods in the middle of the night. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? And his sister is trying to help him. But he's still annoying as fuck at the van. I thought it was hilarious. The hitcher did what he did to him. That back and forth. Between the hitcher and Franklin in that van was fucking hilarious. I just... First of all, and I didn't even add this to the 10 things I've always wondered. Why the hell would you pick up a guy that looked like that? Are you insane? Are you asking to get killed? Jesus Christ. These people are too nice. I'm sorry. I would never pick up a guy. I wouldn't even pick up a hitchhiker at all. I never have. Especially a guy that looked like that. Wow. Anyway. But is Franklin the most annoying character in horror history? Number six. Man, this is just my opinion. But after rewatching this, I get it. She has a special place in horror history. Respect. But is the character of Sally as a final girl overrated? I I think to be a, a proper final girl, she lived. She did what she survived. You know, she got out of that situation at the table. She ran, find the nearest truck that went by. She did her part. She lived. But is she overrated a little bit? I say yes. A final girl should at least fight back, do something a little bit that screams final girl. This is 1974 too, so, you know, but still. All she does is scream. All she does is fucking scream throughout the last 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Run and scream. I, I, I don't blame her. I'd be screaming too, but I'm just being honest. I didn't like Okay. Next. Number seven. 
this was a coincidence, guys. I just thought, was this a coincidence or did the director Toby Hooper did this on purpose? I don't know. So, like I said, this movie is loosely based, I think, on Ed Gein. Ed Gein. Serial killer in Wisconsin. Ed Gein. So the guy at the end that helps Sally, that they survive, the truck driver at the end, who's also in part two, by the way, in the chili cook-off competition, his name is Ed Gwyn. Gwyn? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Ed Gwyn, you got the killer, and you have Ed Gwyn. Come on. That's too confusing for me. Was that a coincidence? Or was that a little, like, a little... I don't know. But yeah, this guy, this truck driver, I don't know if it's the same, same character. But he is in the part two. And he is in the chili cook-off scene. Did he... Coincidence, huh? That's cool. I like that. Number eight. What do people taste like? Do you ever wonder that? When you're watching like movies like this and Dahmer and Hannibal Lecter. What do people taste like? I don't get it. I don't get it. But yeah, it was one of those things, guys. You ever just think about it? What does it taste like? Maybe it's cooked. I think it tastes like chicken, turkey breast. There's a scene in The Walking Dead where uh, Terminus, they're eating people. And uh, the guy has a theory that the prettier you are, the more attractive the prettier you are, the tastier you are. I'm probably fucking delicious then. Chef's kiss. Um, Number nine. Why don't we ever see his face? I mean, it's not like you have to see in every movie like Jason. You don't have to have the face reveal. But I think we do see his face briefly in the reboot in 2003, I think, right? For like Andrew Divikoff, what his name is. I think briefly in the beginning you see his face. Or was it 2006? I don't remember which one. But it's brief. Because he had a skin condition. That's why he wears the mask. But I don't know, guys. I never hardly see him without the mask. And that's fine. I don't, I don't want to. I'm just saying throughout the franchise, or even this 74 movie, I don't ever remember Leatherface in his face, uh, his actual you know, real you know, face. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something in, in this movie or some of the, is there deleted scenes throughout the franchise where you see his face? I don't know. It's just coincidence. And, oh my God, my earplug went off. All right, number 10, and this is another one of my opinions. And you know what? I don't feel bad about this one. Because a lot of people share my sentiment. Do you guys think the 2003 reboot is better? I'm on the side of 2003 reboot. Mm -hmm. No offense to the 74. It's classic. I mean, it belongs in a museum. It's, it is. it is. But the 2003 reboot, I just found a little bit more entertaining. It was a little bit more faster pace for me. Um... The original other face was was amazing. He's he's the OG. He's 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 probably the best. But um, I really did like Leatherface in the prequel in this reboot. Andrew Divikoff, I believe his name is, that big bastard in the movies. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think they did this just a little bit better, you know. But what do you guys think? What what team are you on? Seventy four or two thousand three? Either one. But I just, I just, something about, I just think they did this right. This is one of the best uh, reboots, remakes, whatever you want to call it, that they've done. Of the major four, I call it the major four. Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Of all those ones, the one that did the reboot the best, that got it right, in my opinion, was Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 2003. So there you have it, guys. That's my opinion. Please like and subscribe. Guys, comment comment what do you feel about texas chainsaw massacre is there anything i'm missing give me some answers here i'm an open book i want to know so there you have it guys please like and subscribe stab that notification bell and i will see you again soon take it easy